Hey, Leuven, and welcome back once again to Cauldrons of War Stalingrad here, um, June 11th, 1942. So, a special bonus episode brought to you by my Patreon supporter, Boomerow. If you would like to see additional content as well, then patreon.com, see which other support suits you. With that said, let's go back here first. <laughs> You're shelling these guys refitting. Not that much I can do there now, any which way. Now, uh. What I could do. is I want to at the very least try and do that. These guys are not even that powerful, especially in artillery. Now, down in the south, it seems like they got some troop there now near Vornish. Um, <clears throat> I'm not too interested in trying to take it. In fact, it kind of sucks that I, uh, that this is a situation. Um, they got two new troops there. But... I'll just refit, break through, it takes super long, unfortunately. Um, let's see, there's still nothing here. Then, then the south, these guys retreated again. Mm. Again, they attacked 6th Army. It didn't help them. They're constantly sending more troops there. I find that to be very weird. Anyway. Did have those guys go to the front. These guys didn't actually get anything done. Mm. I mean, doing fuel supply now could be a thing, but another thing that I could do is. Send those panzers. Oh, okay, so they now got encircled. Well, that's something. They can still do shelling. But <clears throat> I think with them trying to break out, that will cut them off anyway. Um, I could just... Uh, for them go and do breakthrough. I'm gonna need to do that at some point anyway. In the north. Yeah, defense in that, sure. I don't really want. Just keep plowing away. Uh, they again went for air superiority. Uh, I kinda need to keep the Center. They still have two planes in the south. We have 23. 
Left behind Luftwaffe, the rapid advance of our troops across the steppe has forced the Luftwaffe to move to new airfields in order to continue supporting our troops. For several days, we'll have to do without our aircraft to spot and harass the enemies. Zero planes this turn, forming up south. Into the wild step. Our most advanced troops in the steppe are now more than 300 kilometers from our most advanced logistics depot. Supplying our units lost in the vastness of a gigantic steppe with poor drivable roads has become a logistical nightmare. Units engaged in the dawn race gain the isolated stretch lines and straggler traits. Operational adaptation. <clears throat> Our operations call for an offensive in two main directions, east and south. It therefore seems logical to split Army Group South into Army Group A in the south and Army Group B in north and east. In this scheme, Federal Feld Marshal von Bock, who commands Army Group South, would take command of Army Group B and Wilhelm List would have that of Army Group A. Von Bock, with whom the Fuhrer is already in permanent conflict with, is vigorously opposed to this decision. Although it's obvious that he's protesting against a possible decrease in his power, some of his arguments make sense. The solution of the two groups would amount to dividing the efforts in two perpendicular directions, making the task of our logistics even more problematic. What should we do? Let's create one. The Falplau plan called for a very large encirclement of Soviet troops, but the observation is that too many enemies are escaping the too loose mesh of our net. The Wehrmacht High Command wants to impose a more restricted encirclement at Milarovo, an important highway railway junction. Such a change of plan would mobilize our mobile troops currently employed on the banks of the Don by directing them due south. There's nothing there, though. Rostov would thus take precedence over Stalingrad in our strategic objectives. Felt Marshal von Bach firmly opposes this operation, which calls into question the initial plan for uncertain profits. <clears throat> Developers notes Milarovo. Historically, the Germans tried to finally create a great encirclement from which the Soviets attempted to escape through general retreat. The catches were very meager, but pushing masses of mobile units towards the south, progress towards Rostov, the gateway to the Caucasus, is facilitated. If you have chosen to drive to Milarovo, you will have to pursue and eliminate the Soviets before they reach the foothills of the Caucasus, where they can dig in and wait for you in a strong position. If too many Soviet armies escape you, your entire campaign would be in jeopardy. But they already retreated, so it's like... <laughs> and there's nothing you can do at the start of the campaign. They will just leave. Like... Okay... In Africa, Tobruk has finally fallen. As 30,000 Allied troops go into captivity, the Africa Corps has secured an impressive amount of equipment and fuel. This is a great victory for the Axis, and the Fuhrer dreams all the more of a gigantic strategic pincer that would meet in the Middle East, starting from the Caucasus and North Africa. After such a defeat, it is unlikely that the British will be able to defend Egypt. The road to the Suez Canal is opened. Axis cohesion plus five to Egypt. Our <clears throat> plans are in the hands of the enemy. A liaison aircraft has just crashed behind enemy lines. This would not be so catastrophic if it did not carry the blueprints of the first phase of the Fallblau plan. A rescue mission was able to locate the aircraft, but they were unable to find the precious documents, which are now probably in enemy hands. What lessons will the Soviet draw from this information? Will they believe a disinformation operation, or will they strengthen the defensive system? At the German General Staff, the question of speeding up operations arises, but for the time being, the Fuhrer's wrath is felt. At the 23rd Panzer Division, deemed at fault, heads are rolling. The atmosphere is deleterious and is afraid feels the deep divisions within the high command. Minus two points for Army Group South Command. Army draws conclusions from this, but you do not know which ones. Um... Okay, once again, in the north, shelling all three of these guys. In a problematic state, but 54 can be able to do a whole lot. Let's take a look here. Air superiority for the Soviets, but it doesn't change much. Same here, here, then. The shelling at least leads to the 
killing of the 29th army, that's useful. Um, how many planes did we have there again? Four. Uh, Let's see if we can re-establish air supply there. Um, so if it's do a night attack against 4th Panzer, they also got a new unit. Um, 13th Tank Corps go to the front. Well, these two are still encircled and there's the 50th Army there now. Whereas down here, these guys continue to retreat somewhat, not really doing anything. So I'm doing a double movement. What I what I actually want to do is, oh crap! So everything is armor group A. Shit. Ah, uh, should have sent them before to split up, but I didn't think about that. I wanted to send the fourth army over to Voronezh and then the first panzer army away but then now these guys have to move to army group B costing me an extra point. Right. Now these guys... Kharkov offensive? Wait. Oh it is here. Right, right. Um, so you're going now to capture Voronezh it's just kind of sucky in a way that you have no control over which units go where and you're just kind of screwed at that point. I don't need to refit them. They can immediately go to race along the dock. And now Army Group A It's a Panzer Corps. That's 2, 8, 12. This is 1, 5. Obviously, 57th Panzer Corps then. They would still benefit, I guess, a lot from refitting here. They didn't get the infantry, they didn't get the tanks. progress with them but that doesn't really help that much if you go to the front now that that army is gone I can quickly move through there <clears throat> they're saying army group south plus one command point but that's not <laughs> there's nothing happening there let's start here so there's nothing there um, Let's start with that. Nothing happened there this time. They keep doing this night attack, but it doesn't seem to have done a whole lot with the 16th army. In fact, I would say that it exhausts the that army quite a bit, but uh, didn't get that for me. The units of the 4th Panzer Army swallowed miles without taking the slightest rest. The mad right of the Wehrmacht along the Don has reached the extensive defensive buffer zone of the Stalingrad region. The rest of the operations should quickly bring this campaign to a close. So now we're here. And what did we leave behind? The 2nd Hungarian. Wow. Okay, that 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's exactly what I wanted. What what a surprise. It's the first time ever. Lol. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just very confused as <laughs> to what the what the enemy is doing. They just killed themselves. It's like, what are you doing, man? I uh, uh, sure they put that to the reserve. I'm not really well, actually now that I'm thinking. About it, Ability to keep shelling every turn since I'm getting double rail. They should be getting the supplies. These guys are in deplorable state, just like these. I'm actually doing quite fine here, even without the heavy artillery, which I really would not have expected. Um, as I said, I, I've done the minor campaign before in order to get eight points, because you can only unlock the grand campaign if you do the case blue scenario which is a slightly smaller scenario not dealing with Kharkov and such and then you need to get eight points so what I did back then is I sent but this didn't go very that well it still went reasonably okay but I don't think I would have ever been able to capture Leningrad with just the 50th core like that I sent the heavy machinery there and then I started shelling and taking Leningrad by that point was pretty easy um actually and that's why i kind of chose that again here um, also to make sure that it, it gets the points but um, that's uh and yeah stuff three points here I mean, so again, I'm going for air superiority. I, I just really need to be able to use those that rail capacity too. Like, uh, there is no way I can leave that. I don't necessarily need it as long as I'm moving forward here, but uh, definitely in in other positions. This is Army Group A. They have five. If I use fuel supply. I just I don't remember how much progress you get from just moving them. Crap. That means that I either need to do another movement, because I'm quite sure you're getting more with the Panthers. Another thing that I could do potentially is move these over to Rostov. That puts a three to the front is two. Then one. I guess that's better than it also puts them up to the front. Yeah. Rest of us all and the doors to the coxes are open. That's exactly what I wanted to achieve at least for this turn and then we have currently there's no rail apparently for whatever reason here. I find that to be very weird. Why would they not have rail at Ross stuff? On Don already. Um, I mean, there's nothing here now, so I guess I can go for fuel supply. It doesn't matter that they're pinned for this turn. It sucks that they have stretch lines of stragglers. I would spend a point, but that would make things problematic. It's just weird that this is still there. I don't want to spend the points to, you know, do something about it. But um, well, first of all, we'll surely just refit them. Or we fed them with trucks. And 
technically them too. Doesn't cost me anything for now. I, I might as well. I mean, I need to move them, and then maybe next turn I'll get another fuel, and I, I could just quickly do that. That's not bad. I still think I'm going to Moscow. At least it seems like plus 50. Armor goes out. Plus 3 command points. Just, okay, yeah. I kind of feel like there's some problem here or some bug. I, I should not be getting preparation points. I mean, the, I mean the, the full full attack. This is delegating the AI. Not, not even bothered kind of talking about that. Um, yeah, okay. I guess they died. There's only these guys left. Uh, let's go up here. Um, they have nothing there now. No, not really. They got at least one armor. At least it takes down that, and then I'll just refit. So it's still going down. They should be pretty weak. I don't think they can like recover through any means, really. I'll really have to see up here. Basically, I don't even have the points to change anything else around here. There's a lot of armies. Um, I mean, I, I like that, but again, I can't really do a whole lot. Barrier troops. Um, the weather. What's up with the weather? It's bad. Yeah, there's rain there. Not here. Not particularly useful, sadly, on them. Not that much of an effect up there. 24th tank or I don't really care. Bunch of night attacks, they're just wasting their points really. This was already at zero, so. Oh, they put a unit there. Hmm. It's a bit sad that it takes so long. <laughs> 83, huh? Mm, fair enough. There's still zero. So not only do I want to definitely refit these guys to do that way. They can now move twice in terms of being fast. How about here? Um, can also refit them by truck. I can. Basically, do breakthrough, progress, progress. And then they need more fuel, and then next turn I can swallow the rest of the, the miles here with them. They have some fuel, but it will be tough to get them to keep going as well. Luftwaffe to the rescue. Our troops engaged in the Don Loop must advance towards Stalingrad, but the Soviet opposition and the logistics stretching from Stalino over more than 300 kilometers of step are slowing down our operations. Von Richthofen is ready to mobilize the Luftwaffe to relieve the logistics of the army. The Luftwaffe can come to the rescue by not only making room in its bombers to transport crates and barrels, but also by putting 100 of its trucks at the service of the ground forces. It is even envisaged to transfer to the front the 9th Flak Division 
and its fearsome 88 millimeter tubes. Of course, they would come at the expense of air support operations. They can continue the bombings, no effect, provide permanent logistical assistance, which will give all units in the dumb band uh, fuel, less tiredness, less aircraft, 25 trucks, three guns, or one time. Um, so it's either trucks and guns. I would like the planes. Let's keep the planes and provide one time assistance. Live off the rescue. It was It was with his usual figure that von Richthofen gets to work. 3,000 tons of capacity were allocated to supplying the armies and around 100 additional trucks transporting supplies needed by troops in the front line day and night. Plus one, fuel for the panzers, and they get less tired. Operation Nordlicht. Important reinforcements have just arrived in the north. Operation Nordlicht is ready to be launched. It should allow the capture of Leningrad and get junction with the Finns. The latter have become cautious, and this operation should reassure them so that they get more involved in the front. The offensive resumes. Indeed it does. Indeed it does. Seems like nothing happened here. They have one fuel. And I need them to progress here. The Kubat River is reached, and a vast region, rich in wheat, is in the hands of the Axis. Sweet. Um, that means that there is now the battle for Maycop. And what we have is three militia, the first separate rifle corps, and the fifth, 151st fortified district. Um, and this is the battle for Maycop. Yeah. Um, there's again not this a wood airlift, but there's rain this turn. They got the first tank army here now. Kind of sucks. They're still weak, and they also got the 62nd army. Huh. This this got changed here. It's the race to the Tarek. Mm. Let's progress. Give them fuel supply here. Um, I guess I... Yeah, they're one fuel now, indeed. Uh, this... Isn't really doing anything. Then here they did a bunch of night attacks. Still didn't do anything. Over here they smashed into 6th army again. But I think we're finally done here. So this should progress in just one go. Not, I just wasted it. Or it's gone now. They arrive here. Um, I would need to refit sixth. Stretch lights, exposed flanks, and stragglers. That's not necessarily the best way to advance. Mm. For this turn, I think it's probably prudent just to go for a hedgehog defense, getting rid of all of those nasty things. I think Blitz, I'll likely get to 100 immediately. Another thing I could do is refit them. Probably good here. The problem is though that they didn't really get the reinforcements. They're not tired anymore, but they are at 7 out of 12. Let's send 1st Panzer at the very least to the on loop. 
Southern approach to Stalingrad. There's nothing there. If I capture Stalingrad, I'm not, not really sure how it deals with that. Um, like, I don't want to lose that because there's some Soviet there and then they grab points. Um, let's send them to the Don Loop and the next turn I'll be uh, doing some nasty there. Can't supply, can't airlift. And to be honest, I can't do shelling, but they're lagging behind and they have stretch rounds. Let's go for a hedgehog defense first. <clears throat> and uh, let's just re well. Let's send this this cavalry. It doesn't need to uh, use fuel. Um, I think let's send these guys in race to the Tarek. Not really sure how powerful many of those other armies are, but every army I kill at least uh, helps a little bit. Four in the north. That's a one time thing. Send them to the Siege of Leningrad. There we go. All of these are doing quite poorly. So now I will do. Assault. I lost an infantry too. Wow. Would not have imagined that. But I guess it did happen. Operations in the Caucasus. As a German player, your frustrations in the Caucasus are going to be many. Supply will often be lacking. There are too many simultaneous operations and not enough troops. You will always lack command points to bring in reinforcements from your strategic reserves. All these constraints were the same as the Germans experienced historically, but that alone will not console you. However, there are some useful tips. Alternate operations. Do not push everywhere at once. Split your large units. They'll be less powerful, but will be able to cover more operations. It will be easier to supply. As a reminder, supply by horse-drawn wagons is only possible for core and divisions. Use your air force and mountain troops. Historically, the Germans were able to take Novorossiysk, except for the port, which frustrated access supply shipments, and Maykop planted their flank on Mount Elbrus and bombed Grozny. Will you do better? Yeah, maybe. You may have noticed that you're starting to run out of units to cover all operations. It's probably time to split up your units. This action is irreversible, but has many advantages. Smaller units are easier to supply. You gain in tactical and strategic flexibility, what you lose in punch. Of course, getting all these smaller units into action will cast a lot more command points, but this cannot be avoided. Imagine the formidable strength of the current front and the distances to be covered by the supply system, and you will understand that things have changed. The Step of Thirst. The troops penetrate ever deeper into the immense step, leaving behind them the last dwellings, advancing under a murderous sun with no shadow, which no shadow ever comes to attenuate. As the troops are relying on the country for their food supply, thirst and hunger gnaw at the men in the barren steppes, who often receive only half a slice of bread and a bowl of soup a day. Look at his sunglasses here. What a handsome guy. He doesn't seem to be worrying about thirst at all. Anyway, attrition and tiredness of units in the step plus two. What a heat. 
Blücher 2. The port of Temriuk on the Sea of Azov, at the other side of the Kurt Strait, has been occupied by our troops. This capture will allow us to finally launch Operation Blücher to bring our troops from the Crimea to the Taman Peninsula. The passage will be safe for small boats and ferries while the Luftwaffe will drive out the Soviet fleet from the area. The Taman beachhead will make it possible to directly threaten the port of Novorossiysk, the capture of which will open the coastal road to Batumi and above all will facilitate our supply. Operations on the west coast now depend on the Crimean HQ. Operation Blucher is launched. Armor Group South or B planes are mobilized this turn. At last. Rommel stopped at the gates of Egypt. The Africa Corps was stopped at the gates of Egypt. Short of supplies and faced with difficult terrain, its tanks were unable to dislodge. The Allied forces of General Okelnek, firmly entrenched around the El Alamein, barely 100 kilometers from the port of Alexandria. The future will tell if it's possible to resume the offensive once reinforcements have joined the front. However, this failure has been noted by Turkey, further reducing the likelihood of this wait-and-see country joining our alliance. Rommel can still win. Some of you may wonder why the game uses a command point system instead of letting you move every unit every turn. A close look at the history shows that in reality, units spend a lot of time reorganizing, waiting for fuel, sometimes weeks, or simply for the means to attack. Even Fall Blau, this launch, had to be distributed in several phases as the Wehrmacht was unable to commit all of this at once. The command point system reflects that and forces you to define clearly your priorities. Do you have enough command points? Definitely yes. Intensive playtests have been conducted until average players could at least match Wehrmacht's historical performances. Seasoned players can easily take Stalingrad, Astrakhan, and Baku. Okay. Um, to accomplish this, do not chase all your objectives at the same time. Prioritize and focus your efforts. Okay. We'll see. Hmm. There is that. I have the 46th Infantry Division. They have one attack. Is there anything in the Crimea? Group of mutton clot. This is Operation Blucher, okay. Uh they got oh, sell the twenty third there. Alright. Um, I'll just go over what happened and the state of everything and I guess I'm calling it quits then. So there's a lot of Soviet forces here actually near the Sinavina. I guess they're building up. Not so much there and then they still have a gazillion forces. Those places. Second army here. And Voronash, they're still just kind of doing nothing. Against the fourth army. They attack these. I might have to dig them in. We'll see. 57th army. So there's yet another army, but I'm very close to finishing that off. Yeah, this was my problem, that they would dump a unit there and then they can technically cancel this operation if I don't put anything there. I'm gonna have to see how that works. Um, I think, again, cavalry does not consume fuel, it seems like indeed. And then here, the fortified district attacked, but they just lost an infantry. They, I guess, kind of died. But now I'm out of fuel, and that's a problem. All right. Uh, it's interesting enough though anyway I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please do consider leaving a like comment or subscribe special shout out to my patreon supporters Boon Mura, Benji Pastor, C Data, Swords, Man, Ningo, Thomas Loftrelane thanks for watching everyone take care see you next time bye bye